platelet aggregation was a big topic because that's what Dyerberger proposed the mechanism in, in, of cardio protection was in the Eskimos because mm -hmm. they had published in 78 a paper saying EPA is what's causing the platelets to be not so sticky in the Eskimos and that's why they don't have because in those days it was atherothrombosis was the cause. The thrombotic events were causing the heart attacks. That's what it was thought. And it's still true. Um, so we studied platelets. We got a hematologist on board, Scott Goodnight, and we did all kinds of platelet studies. And platelet aggregation was reduced by the omega-3. Um, bleeding time was reduced. Uh, they weren't outrageously reduced. I mean, it wasn't like dangerous, but it was like uh, effect on bleeding time was sort of like taking an aspirin. So it wasn't, but it's still, you know, it's kind of unexpected that an oil would do this. Uh, that, that was, and we did have, we had one patient, one normal guy who had a very big drop in platelet count and we had to stop him from, we don't know why. And it's platelet count, not platelet aggregation. It's a different question. Mm. Um, and again, we're def like you said, we're feeding 20 to 25 grams of omega-3, which is just out of control high. There's no way you do that today. There's no need to do that today. Um, but that's where we started, I guess you. But even at that high of a dose, most people, it was, it was, it was pre pretty safe for the month oh, yeah, yeah. for most people, except for that one. Oh yeah, they, they were, nobody had any problems tolerating it, um, GI. And now is this where the origin, I mean, because you hear for the most part, when you think about safety of omega-3, it's it seems like, you know, is there an upper tolerable intake level? I mean, people are more concerned, most concerned about the potential, um, you know, as they like to call it, quote unquote, quote, blood thinning effect. And I don't know yeah. if that's accurate, but... Um, it's a you know. reasonable concern, certainly from where it came from, the, the history of it back to the Eskimos who did have long bleeding times. And there were anecdotal stories of Eskimos you know, bleeding to death from a nose bleed, that kind of thing. Now, is that the omega-3s? Who knows what else? I mean, it's a very different environment. Um, and we did see, again, a, a reduction in platelet aggregation and an extended bleeding time. But again, like aspirin, like nobody's that scared of aspirin to a point. Ulcers, no, that's a problem. Um, but yeah, the, the, the classic belief is that there's some concern about omega-3 and bleeding. And we've tried to rebut that many times. And, and I've published three or four studies looking at either past literature on this question, or uh, we, we did one big study where um, uh, we were doing open heart surgery on, on people try, trying to preload them with omega-3 <clears throat> before open heart surgery. This was a Dr. Mozaferian's study, opera, opera study. And we're trying to prevent post-op AFib by giving them a big lo load of omega-3 ahead of time. Because that was the theory at that time that we could prevent atrial fibrillation in people by giving them omega-3 before surgery. And well, it didn't work, didn't make any difference. Um, but we found that even if you give people for like three or four days, 10 grams of omega-3 a day before, before surgery, they actually, when they checked how much bleeding came on with the surgery, how much post-op bleeding was there, there was actually less post-op bleeding with the people that got the omega-3 than the placebo. Less need for transfusion, which was kind of cool. I mean, that that is not that we would advocate it for reducing risk for bleeding, but it's not increasing risk for bleeding. Interesting. Any speculation on why you think that was? Or? Yeah, I mean, we always kind of back up into this nowadays um, anti-inflammatory effect and how that, which is sort of a black box, because how that relates to risk for bleeding is not at all clear why they would even be related. But so we don't really know why, uh, but we, we do know that there's the concern about bleeding, even if you're taking blood thinners. It's, there's no, in the, even the FDA, in their uh, package insert for Lovesa and all the omega-3s for, for Vasipa, they say, uh, does not cause clinically significant bleeding. So the um, Lovesa and the Vasipa, for people that aren't aware, these are prescription um, available types of omega-3. There's a little, some, some differences right. between the two, correct? Right, so. Lovesa is an EPA plus DHA ethyl ester. Uh, Vasipa is an EPA only ethyl ester. 
Do you know the ratio of EPA to DHA in Lovasa? It's about um, two parts EPA to one part DHA, roughly. Okay. Or three to two. So that's interesting to know that the FDA doesn't says that it doesn't increase the bleeding risk because um, I know of several physicians, and I, I think it's pretty standard practice now that when they prescribe a patient in you know anti um, something that's going to be a you know blood thinner as, as they call it, um, they say not to take yeah uh, and, oil as and, a precaution, the, I guess. And the FDA says if you're on blood thinners, uh, you should be monitored. Well. You monitor them anyway. I mean, and you're going to take omega-3, then you should be monitored. Well, okay, fine. They're already being monitored. So there's no, there really isn't any serious, significant increased risk, as they say, in clinically significant bleeding. You might cut yourself shaving and bleed longer than you used to. Mm -hmm. But is that, are you now becoming normal? And you were abnormally, I mean, right. it's, it's, it's interesting. Just a little anecdote. My, my son was, is a doctor. He was stationed in an Air Force base in Japan, and a, one of the soldier, one of the airmen on the base had a traffic accident, a bad one, and they had to transport the, the kid to a Japanese hospital for orthopedic surgery. And after the surgery, he threw a blood clot uh, to his lung. And so Dr. Gabe said, did they, well, was he on heparin? I mean, normally we'd put him on heparin if you're going to do major surgery to prevent blood clots. And he'd say, we never put people on heparin. The Japanese don't. Because maybe they're already anticoagulated enough with the omega-3, they don't need to do this. So it was a, a surprise. It makes me think that uh, when we say you're prolonging the bleeding time, maybe you're moving it toward normal or optimal and what's normal in America, it's like a normal cholesterol. You, nobody wants to have a normal cholesterol. Maybe you don't want to have a normal bleeding time either. Anyway, very I, good. I, very, I digress. I think very interesting point. And um, I'm sure you're, you're aware of this, but there have been some studies on omega-3 playing a preventative role in pulmonary embolisms. Like, so actually, sure. Um, sure. So, it, so that would know. play that role too, right? Right. That would suggest that they're beneficial in that regard.